Hey everyone, Eric just did a video called The Taunting Tank, which was really cool where he talked about the edges, the skills, um, the process you would take to build a tank character that could draw aggro, taunt the opponents, all sorts of really cool stuff. And so I thought I would do something similar for one of my favorite character types, which is a double-fisted shooter um, who... Well, let's just be honest, it's cool to send a lot of love down. Savage World, one of the best games of the day. Hey, hey. hey everyone, it's Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. We'd love your support, we'd love your likes, subscribes, everything would be absolutely fantastic. So thank you everybody who watches and for what you're doing. So what do I want to do today? Today I want to talk about a build video. Um, Eric started them. I'm going to throw my own two cents in. And what I'm going to build is kind of a double-fisted shooter um, who has the main goal of maximizing the amount of shots they can take, um, send as much lead downfield as possible, and two styles, right? There'll be those who are kind of like... Um, gunslingers with six shooters or um, Glocks or what have you. And then there's the guys who are running around with some machine guns um, and that sort of thing. So uh, that's their main focus. Also, do it with the minimal amount of penalties. So our build is going to focus on getting rid of penalties because um, obviously, you know, anyone can pick up a submachine gun, start blasting, um, and then you've got the minus two recoil penalty. You shoot twice, you've got a multi-action penalty. And so these things start adding up. And so you are sending a lot of lead, but you're not hitting your targets. So we want to be able to hit our targets and make that, that happen. The main drawbacks of this character um, type is they really have no short game. I'm not going to invest in combat edges that relate to melee. I'm not going to give them a lot of strength so that they can do a lot of damage. I'm going to throw a couple of points into fighting just so that their parry's not so bad, but they're really not designed to take on a foe face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, also, potentially low mobility. Um, that's primarily for some of the edges I would take for someone who has like a submachine gun, which is rock and roll. That you can't move to use that edge. Also, the later we might pick up marksmen, which you also can't move in order to take advantage of those um, penalty reductions. So might have low mobility, but nothing says you can't move and shoot, right? But if you want to take full advantage of the edges that you take, um, you may have lower mobility. And then the final thing is they're not really going to do great in any tests other than kind of shooting tests against an opponent. They're, they don't have any taunt. Really, they have a little, maybe you can give them a couple points here and there, maybe some intimidation, but that's not what they're really going to be good at. So they're really all about shooting. Um, and as I do this, um, as I do the build, I'm going to do edge selection. Um, I'm going to pick things that just make me a better shooter. Um, even if it's not just shooting related, I'm going to pick things that help me go earlier in the round or help me minimize penalties, help me um, avoid someone else attacking me so that I can't do what I need to do. But anyway, I'll, I'll talk about all those things. I'll note that I'm only going to use the core book for this build basically, um, but I will at the end talk about a couple of edges from other source books that are kind of cool, so I would stick around to watch that um, because uh, there's a few uh, third party as well as peg settings that have a couple of interesting things that you might want to use as part of your build if your game master allows you to do that. Um, like I said, I'm also not talking much about non-shooting edges, so there's no reason that you can't um, not take one of the sh edges that I'm picking and instead maybe pick a social edge or maybe you want to pick, you do want frenzy for your low fighting, but you still want to, or lower fighting, but you invested a little more in fighting and you do want frenzy. You want to be a little bit better in combat. Absolutely do what you want. This is very specific around what I'm trying to bring field to the table, which is, um, like I said, two-fisted, lots of lead, minimize the penalties, make it so that you are combat effective all the time. Um, again, in the comments, put down what you do, what your edges are, how you're gonna build it, and just let me know. And if I make a mistake, always gonna happen, can't be perfect, let me know in the comments so that I can fix that mistake and we can all learn together, which I think is important. So let's start off with our character build. Um, as we're building them at their first novice, we're going to focus on a human 
uh, because they get an extra edge and we want to have that free edge. Um, and then from the ability scores, I am taking my agility a D8 and I'm taking my strength down to a D4. The agility of D8 is important because shooting skill tied attribute is agility. And we want to be able to minimize the points we have to spend to get our shooting up, to get the highest level of shooting skill as we possibly can get. Now, I leave smarts at D6 and spirit at D6 because I want to buy, um, and for some of my advances, attribute increases so that I can get them to a level where I can pick some specific uh, edges that I want, specifically Alon and level-headed. So I don't want to um, make one of those a D4 so that I can raise my agility up even to a D10. I want to leave them in a position where I can bounce them up just enough so that I can get those edges that I want later. Um, again, your mileage may vary. What you're trying to do may be a little different. Um, so hindrances, I take my full four points of hindrances, two minor, one um, major, or two majors, or four minors, whatever it is. But I want the full four points because I'm going to spend it on two more edges. Um, so what are the edges that I pick to start with? So the beauty of this build is that the character is already super effective and they can do it at novice using the edges. So the first edge I'm going to pick is two gun kid, which requires novice and an agility of D8, which we have. Two gun kid is just like, um, they say it's just like two fisted, but two fisted is for melee. And the whole point of it is they allow them to fire or throw a weapon in each hand as two different actions, but without triggering a multi-action penalty. So I can do two actions without map, without the multi-action penalty. Now you still have an offhand issue, right? If you're firing from your left hand and you're right-handed, there is the offhand penalty, but that's where our second, our second one comes in, which is ambidextrous. This one says, is also novel, novice agility D8, which we have again, your warrior is deft at his left hand as he is with his right, ignores offhand penalty. So right off the bat, we can fire, even if we're just firing a six shooter, we can fire two shots around, no map, um, and no offhand penalty. So two actions, no penalties. If you're a shooter like a submachine gunner, that's like two high rate of fire weapons, then you're just dealing with the recoil penalty, but we're in really good shape. Now, the last edge I wanna take um, to start with, and this is where you could take um, something different or whatever, but I'm gonna start with trademark weapon. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want that plus one. So now I got rid of some minuses, I got some pluses, um, I got a plus one. So now remember that will help me with people who got cover or, um, you know, when I'm, my range is not uh, short range. So. I want that plus one. Um, so that's what I'm taking. So from a skill standpoint, as we look at the skills, I invest heavily in shooting, obviously. So I spend five points on my shooting to get it all the way up to a D10. Remember, after a D8, to get to D10, I need to spend two skill points instead of the one. So I work hard to get that up at D10. Then I, you can spend your skill points depending on how you want to skill out your, your character. I spend a couple of skill points on fighting, so it's at a D6, because I want to at least have a decent parry um, of five um, and not be so easy to hit. Um, now you can invest a couple more points into that if you wanted, make it D8, and then spend it less on other skills. But... I wanted my character to have some fighting um, at a D6. Uh, I wanted some healing. I wanted to round them out a little bit just so they have some other skills and they're not completely um, at the mercy of everything. I increased my notice, for example. So all those things is, is what, I, what I did. But the whole point was really making sure I could maximize my shooting. So let's get into the character. So um, my first advance... I'm immediately gonna take my attribute increase. You can take one attribute increase per rank, and I'm gonna take it right away. And why am I doing that? Because my character is already super powerful um, with his two guns, he's already doing great, he's very effective, and so I can, I don't, I'm not, um, you know, chomping at the bit to be able to get a, a partic get an edge because my novice character needs that edge to be useful and, and interesting. He's already useful and interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and take that attribute increase because that D8 to spirit 
allows me now to get along. And Eric makes a joke, and it is kind of a joke, but I do bow down to the to the altar of Elan. I love that edge. Um, I like having it because when I spend a Benny, I get a plus two. And so if I'm doing something and I'm failing at it and I'm using a Benny, that plus two to the trait roll is super, super beneficial. Um, so that's so that's something I want to take right away. Now, maybe you want to make your shooter um, have more chances to go earlier in the round. And so maybe you're going to use quick um, as as your edge versus taking an attribute increase or what have you. Uh, maybe you'll take extraction early. So now with extraction, um, that that is a novice ability or is a novice edge and also requires an agility of D8. It says when a ca character refalls from melee, when a character redraws from melee, adjacent attackers get a free fighting attack against them. This is a very dangerous proposition for most, but not for your wily champion. When moving away from adjacent foes, one of them, one of them, um, doesn't get his free fighting attack. So that might be something you want to take because you can shoot in combat or in melee combat, but you're shooting against their parry. And chances are, if this is like a heavy-duty fighter kind of person or, you know, tough guy, he's got a high parry. So you'll want to back away from that combat, get yourself at a range where you can um, take advantage of your shooting skill, make that a target number uh, four. And, you know, so extraction might be useful as well. Um, but I'm specifically early attribute D8, edge I'm taking a lawn. So then the next edge, or the next when I'm talking about the third advance now, so I've used up two of my advances. The third advance, I call it a skill or edge advance. Um, so this is where you might throw in that edge for extraction or something like that. Me, I'm doing a skill increase. And so I'm going to go ahead and increase my, increase my shooting to a D12. There's a lot of discussion from a mathematical standpoint, what have you. Is it really all that useful to go to a D12 versus a D10? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It makes it harder to get a critical fail. Um, but this character build is a shooter trying to minimize or maximize his chance to shoot, hit. So, yeah, I'm going to invest in that attributing or that... Um, skill increase to d12 whether it's totally useful or not again you can you know go after an edge instead or increase some of your other skills if you want that's that's fine but that's what i'm doing so now we've eaten up our our advances and we uh a novice and now we're hitting season season is where i'm excited to be for this particular character because the first edge i'm going to take is either rapid fire or rock and roll and so rock and roll is a seasoned, requires shooting a D8. Experienced shooters learn to compensate for the recoil of fully automatic weapons. If the character has with this edge doesn't move on his turn, doesn't move, has to make sure, he ignores the recoil penalty when firing at a rate of fire of two or higher. Um, recoil penalty is minus two. That's a big deal. Now we can fire our automatic weapon without the recoil penalty and that is a big deal. Now you can't move, um, but hopefully you're in a situation. You know, if you're if you're smart and where you're set up, um, or you've got your friends who are kind of doing a barricade. Yeah, you can sit there and just spray lead down and and you just mow down your enemies um, with your automatic weapons. Now it doesn't. It says if the character doesn't move, they ignore recoil penalty when firing at a rate of fire two or higher. It doesn't say you only get to do it for one weapon. It doesn't say you only get to do it one time per turn. So, hey, take advantage of that. Rapid fire then is so if you've got a person who's using six guns or semi-automatic weapon or what have you, rapid fire is also seasoned, requires a shooting D6. The shooter is practiced at taking quick and accurate shots. As long as she's armed with a fast-firing range weapon of some sort, such as revolver or a semi-automatic, and has enough ammunition to do so, she may increase her weapon's rate of fire by one for any one of her shooting attacks turn. Now notice this one does say specifically for any one of their shooting attacks. Um, so now you've got the gunslinger with the two six shooters. You can fire twice quickly and um, in, one, in one shooting action. So that's really useful. Uh, again, now you've got Recoil penalty, because that's a rate of fire two or higher. I believe that applies. 
So maybe you'd want to get rock and roll later to kind of offset that. But again, more lead downrange. Um, so really cool. That's kind of where I want to be at uh, right away on seasoned. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to get those edges. I've been waiting for them. Then the next, um, then the next advance, I go ahead and I do an attribute increase again. And this time for smarts because I want to get level headed. Again, you don't have to do that. There's edges you might want to take in. You might want to increase other skills. That's fine. But I am working towards level headed because I want to be able to go earlier in the round and I didn't invest in quick. So um, you can invest in both. Remember, quick and level headed stack. So um, that would be great too. So then on my sixth advance, I'm using my edge. I'm getting an edge level headed. So um, level headed draw two cards, you get to pick which card you want to use. Um, so very, very useful um, from an action economy standpoint and being where you want. Now, maybe you would have picked edges that let you on a lower card um, get rid of penalties. That's great. So take advantage of that. Um, why not? So anyway, uh, so that's where I'm at with my sixth advance. So when I get to the seventh advance, the reality is I'm a very effective person at what I do already. This character is who they want to be. Now you can start massaging and doing things to either make them more effective or now you can start taking other edges or, t or increasing other skills to make them more well-rounded. That's really your choice. But for me, again, this is a character who's all about shooting. We're going to make them a one-trick pony. And so we start looking at things like maybe improve trademark weapon, which gives you a plus two, um, maybe marksman, and marksman, um, the hero is a natural with range weapons. Um, if, they, if they fire no more than rate of fire one for their first action, they may roll a plus one on their athletics or shooting roll or ignore up to two penalties of, of uh, or Ignore up to two points of penalties from call shots, cover, range, scale, or speed. Um, this is a lesser version of aim maneuver and does not stack with it. Marksman doesn't apply to additional tax after the first. So that might be something you'd want if you do want to um, minimize penalties and taking a single shot. Um, can also go after something like Killer Instinct, which is allows a reroll of... Uh, the hero hates losing, gets a reroll in any opposed test he initiates, because you can use shooting for a test. Um, so maybe that helps out the fact that you don't have those other testing skills that you've used. Um, this is a good time for maybe if you had some that you hadn't really taken before. Yeah, you maybe you want to bring an extraction into the puzzle. Um, so there's a lot of options there that are all still related to shooting. Um, then when I hit veteran, there's really not veteran skills that improve shooting the way we want to shoot. So this is where we might start taking other edges that we haven't taken yet that are um, useful. Think This is where we might, again, try to take uh, marksman or extraction, or maybe we even throw quick in there to do some additional. Um, maybe there's the opportunity to start adding more skills in, um, bringing in other edges that aren't shooting related. Um, and one of them might be dodge, which might be extremely useful to take if you are a shooting character. Dodge says the hero can anticipate attacks or move erratically under fire unless the victim is surprised and taken completely unaware, dodge subtracts minus two from all range attacks made against a character. So you're a shooter and you've got opponents who are shooters, dodge might be a good thing to add to your repertoire. Um, for sure. And so then we, so now we've, we're kind of getting to maybe that was our, mar let's say we take marksman as our first veteran um, advance. And then for our second advance, we took dodge. Now we look at our 10th advance and we start maybe going after some of the improvements like improved level headed, improved rapid fire. Um, but our character isn't really good already. So now you hit, um, your 11th advance, world's your oyster. You're, you're almost as good a shooter as you're going to be. You can start adding in all the other stuff that you want to do that is interesting. Um, so anyway, as promised, right at the end here, there's a couple of or three edges that I've gotten from other source books that might be useful to slot in. You notice there's a, spot, a lot of spots where you can kind of slot something in that... Um, 
So the first one comes from the secret files of Section D, a great a great setting. Really, you should get a copy of it. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in it. It's got some stuff about ammo tracking. It's got some very interesting setting rules. You might want to get it. But one of the ones I wanted to point out was called Shoot First, which is required is seasoned and quick. So this is where picking up quick might be very useful. It says lightning reactions and relentless close quarters combat training make the shooter a deadly foe with a pistol, submachine gun, or thrown blade. Once per round, assuming they are not shaken or stunned, the agent gets a free single shot shooting or athletics against the enemy who moves into or within the short range of their drawn and prepared weapon. Shoot first cannot be used with weapons which normally need two hands, such as rifles or bows. Um, as with all free attacks, the shot is unaltered by edges or combat options. If the agent uses this edge while engaged in melee combat, they instantly become vulnerable as poor core rules. So, uh, um, first strike, but for weapons, for ranged weapons. Cool, right? Uh, Deadlands Weird West has one called Quick Draw, and that's actually been in a couple of other uh, settings too, but Quick Draw is novice, requires agility D8. Um, you draw two cards when spending a Benny for an additional action card. So you get your action card and you say, I'm going to spend a Benny to get another action card. You get two cards instead. Very useful as well. And then finally, Titan Effect um, has something they call Close Quarters Battle. Um, and that's requires seasoned fighting D6, shooting D8. Now, my character actually does have a fighting D6 because I wanted to have at least a decent parry. So your character is skilled in close quarter combat and he is trained to engage enemies with firearms at very short range, like in a hostage situation. Your operative can fire in close combat with submachine guns, shotguns, and assault rifles. So not just pistols anymore, now submachine guns. So for my guy, that becomes a very interesting, um, very interesting option if the G game master is to allow it. So anyway, that is all about building a two-fisted shooter character. Again, it's not the only way, it may not even be the optimal way, I don't know. But you say what you tell me in the comments what edges you would take, how you would build out this character, and we'll all learn together. Again, this is Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. We'd love your support and appreciate you watching and keeping up with the channel. Thanks again. Bye. World, one of the best games Savage world, different setting in a day.